Our scripture passage this morning comes from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, the first nine verses. Listen and receive God's word. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables saying, listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched and since they had no root, they withered. Other seeds fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked them while other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold some 60, some 30. Let everyone with ears listen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Every winter, my mother used to go outside and throw grass seed in the snow. And after watching her do this year after year, I finally asked her, why do you do that? Her response was that as the snow melted, the seed would descend into the grass and the soil, and the seeds that didn't make it would feed the birds. Although I accepted my mother's explanation, I doubted that grass seed thrown on top of snow would take root in the spring. I figured my mother's practice of this off-season planting was something she learned from her grandparents who had a small farm in Kentucky. I did not know until I Googled it in preparation for this sermon that off-season planting or counter-season cultivation, it truly is a thing. It's defined as growing vegetables under adverse climatic or economic conditions. The parable of the sower is Jesus' response to the rejection he experienced in the preceding chapters of the Gospel of Matthew. You know, the Pharisees who questioned why his disciples were plucking grain from the field to eat on the Sabbath. Those same Pharisees questioned the lawfulness of curing a man's withered hand in the synagogue on the Sabbath and accused Jesus of being Beelzebub ball or Satan because he cured a man characterized as a demoniac who was also blind and mute. Heck, even Jesus' own disciples began to lose faith after a storm at sea. Now, despite the opposition and faithlessness Jesus faced, chapter 13 opens with him surrounded by crowds of people, people who are following him because they witnessed him heal the sick, raise the lame, open the eyes of the blind, feed the hungry, and set captives free. They witnessed Jesus welcome women and tax collectors, the marginalized and the ostracized. So Jesus being crowded in gets into a boat and begins to teach in parables, engaging in a little off-season planting, sharing knowledge about the kingdom of God under what were adverse conditions, opposition to and understand, misunderstanding about his ministry. Today's parable is a familiar one. It's one we probably have all heard on more than one occasion. In it, Jesus describes how a sower went out to plant seeds and some fell on the path and were eaten quickly by birds. Some seeds fell on rocky ground where there wasn't much soil, so they sprang up quickly without taking root and were scorched by the sun and withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns and were choked out as they grew. And finally, some of those seeds fell on good soil. They brought forth grain and produced an amazing harvest. It is important to note that I don't believe that the sower purposefully dropped seeds in areas that would not produce. I believe that those seeds were inadvertently dropped from his bag as he made his way to the good and productive soil. 
Now, this is a place in most sermons where we are all asked to examine ourselves and identify which soil best describes us, our Christian walk, and our relationship with God. But as my pastor in the Baptist church used to say, let's stick a pin right there, meaning we'll come back to it in a little while. Although this parable lacks the formula, the kingdom of heaven is like this, it is nonetheless a kingdom parable. And several commentators noted that Jesus' kingdom parables do not tell us what the kingdom will be like in its final consummation. Jesus spent no time describing the golden age of a transformed earth or the golden streets of the heavenly Jerusalem. Jesus' kingdom parables are more concerned with God's action in the present and our response. This parable was created and spoken by Jesus to strengthen and encourage his followers during discouragement in the face of unresponsiveness. One commentator suggests that the sower's three unsuccessful areas may have been meant by Jesus to refer to many of the wider circle of his supporter whose enthusiasm had waned or disappeared. Yet despite these defections, God's purpose for the kingdom would not be thwarted. End of quote. And I might add that despite the initial threats, discouragement, apathy, and questions waged at and faced by Jesus and his followers, those who remained faithful to him, the planting of God's word did not return void, but in God's time an abundant harvest came to fruition. Now back to that pen over there. Rather than asking us to examine ourselves to determine the condition of the soil of our individual lives, I wonder, have we ever stopped to think or consider the seeds we are inadvertently dropping along the way, planting unknowingly or knowingly, and where and into whom we are sowing? Before you answer that question, I must declare with holy boldness that we, EOPC, are not in an off season. We are in a season of transition and transformation. The writer, writer of Ecclesiastes reminds us that for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. Beloved, in the body of Christ, there are no off seasons. We are called and compelled to plant seeds of Christian love, mercy, and grace in every season. We are called to plant seeds of care for the sick, the homebound, the oppressed, and the marginalized every season. We are called to plant seeds of justice, peace, and equity in every season. We are called to plant seeds of prayer, worship, meditation, contemplation, and the study of God's word in every season. This is not the season for us to be passive or anxious or take a wait and see attitude. This is not the season for us to go on hiatus or to hibernate. This is the time when we as the people of God are called to walk in our authority as the body of Christ, spreading the good news of the gospel, making disciples as God's faithfulness is exemplified in the way we move in the world, and spread seeds that yield a bountiful harvest with God's help. We are not called to examine the soil in which we spread seeds, for we may never see the harvest. We are called just to plant and trust that someone else is going to come along and water and that God will give a bountiful increase. Commentator Talitha J. Arnold writes, first century Palestine is a hard place and a hard time to be a Christian. Due to both poverty and persecution, massive numbers of people are migrating out of the region. Within the church itself, there are dissenters and false prophets. With this parable, she writes, Jesus reminds his followers, and Matthew reminds his community, and I am reminding us today that rejection of Jesus' message does not mean the message is wrong or their efforts are folly. It is simply a fact of life, whether in farming or in faith. End of quote. 
The facts of life and changes in worshiping communities, they're inevitable. But the one thing that remains true is that the faithfulness of God remains regardless. Commentator Arnold continues, in my own ministry, I, have, I am often tempted to spend my resources, time, energy, and hope trying to coax, cajole, and beg for growth from inhospitable places and people. She continues, I can also spend much time despairing when the seed does not take root, but the sower does not need to do that because Jesus keeps spreading the word no matter how dry, rocky, or weed infested the ground. And Jesus' followers are called to do the same, end of quote. People of God, in times of change and disappointment, in times that are unsettling and unsteady, in times when we cannot see or discern the future, we are called to not lose focus and to keep our minds stayed on the things of God and trust that God is in control and will see us through. We have absolutely no control over anyone or anything other than ourselves and the decisions about the seeds that we sow. The good news about the parable of the sower is that it ends with a great challenge from Jesus. He goes beyond encouraging and inspiring those who are listening and hearing and tells them basically to keep on keeping on. When faced with discouragement, rejection, oppression, stony and hard soil, Jesus challenges those who are listening and us to believe in the abundance of God. Today is Martin Luther King Jr. Sunday, and I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge that Dr. King was a man who knew what it meant to be rejected as a prophet and despised, hated, and discounted as less than as a black man in America. He knew that his life was at stake every time he stepped into the public arena. Beaten, jailed, threatened, blacklisted by the government and misunderstood at times even by some of his own circle and community, Dr. King made the choice to sow seeds that would challenge and disrupt the status quo. He made the choice to sow seeds that would encourage others to stand even in the face of racial bigotry, hatred, and the threat of physical violence. Dr. King made the choice to sow seeds that would have put his very life, the lives of his family, and those who surrounded him at risk because he made the choice to stand for that which he knew was of God, that all people are created in the image of God. And so he sowed seeds of equality and equity, seeds of justice and nonviolence, seeds of access, and even, when, even though he would not live to see those seeds take root and grow, he did it anyway. Dr. King is quoted as having said, even if I knew tomorrow the world would go to pieces, I would still plant my apple tree. The parable of the sower is filled with promise. The promise that we, much like Dr. King, are called to proclaim even when faced with things we do not understand. Even when faced with the reality that, realities that we would rather ignore. Even when faced with out knowing what's next. Even when faced with doubt and despair. When faced with temptation of faithlessness and giving up. Novelist B.B. Moore Campbell writes, some of us have that empty barrel faith, walking around expecting things to run out, expecting that there isn't enough air, enough water, expecting that someone is doing you wrong. Campbell says, the God I serve told me to expect the best. There is enough for everybody. End of quote. The God we serve is the one who has promised to supply all of our needs according to the riches in heaven. Promise, that to, re promise to renew our strength. Promise that Jesus' yoke is easy and his burdens are light. Promise to raise up leaders after God's own heart. And promise to be with us in and out and off season. 
I already said this, but I think it bears repeating. It may appear that the sower carelessly drops seeds in unproductive and hostile places where they would not take root, would not grow or produce a harvest. However, one commentator suggests that the seeds inadvertently fell from the sower's bag as he walked to the place where he knew the seeds would take root and grow. Earlier, I asked that we examine the seeds we are sowing or dropping inadvertently or maybe sometimes purposefully in this season. Are we sowing seeds that will destroy, harm, and discourage? Seeds that will cause some of our siblings to fail or question where is God? Or are we sowing seeds that will take root and grow, uplift and encourage, nourish and foster faithfulness? Are we sowing seeds that spread love and peace? I thought that the seeds my mother threw on top of the snow in the winter would not take root or grow. Yet the proof is in the pudding, as they say. Every summer, our grass was the healthiest, the most lush, and the greenest in our entire neighborhood. My mother knew that planting, even in the off season, was worth her effort and that it would reap a harvest Beloved in the economy of God, an abundant harvest will come to fruition regardless of the season. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Let everyone with ears listen. Amen.